Hi everyone, welcome. It's Ryan here from the London Craftsman channel. How are you all keeping? Today's video is all about shaker style strips. You can see Sean preparing the strips right now. I'm going to go over how we make these strips and how we prepare the edge um, to be able to prime it and have it ready to add on to our door blank to make shaker style doors. So if that floats your boat, you want to find out more, better stay tuned, watch to the end. I hope you enjoy. Right, so today is all about showing you that process of getting those strips up, okay? Um, getting them up to the standard where they are sanded and primed. Okay, so the way we make our shaker style doors most of the time, apart from special requests, is we add on the strips. It is, I find, the most solid way of making a shaker style door because you're starting with a door blank, a solid door blank, which is nice and stable and has lots of strength in it. And then you're just adding on strips gives it more strength. As you can see here, we've got two sliding doors. You can see from the ends, these are complete now. There are no joints visible whatsoever. I go as close as I can to these panels. There are no visible joints. As you can also see, we have primed all the inside edges and this is also really important, okay? So we've just been spraying a job. Somebody's given us some doors to spray, some shaker style doors, made their own style, but they didn't prepare the inside of the strips before they made their shaker style doors. They were sanded back, but they were not primed. And it took five coats of paint to spray the door to be able to cover those edges. And because effectively it's just a raw MDF edge, sanded up albeit, but it does take so much more spraying effort. So this is a crucial part of doing the faux shaker style doors um, to prepare the edge and to prime it okay always prime it so what we generally do is look around the workshop for whatever six mil off cuts that we've got so when we are making wardrobes we have lots of thin rips left all our draw bottoms and backings for wardrobes and our alcove units are all six mil so we generally have like 100 mil rips 203 whatever we always have lots of rips left over so we get all our off cuts to the table saw along with a full sheet possibly if we haven't got enough and we did on this occasion. We went for a whole sheet on this, Sean, didn't we? How many sheets were is here? We get 18 per sheet. Okay, so we go for 64 mil. About three and a bit sheets. Three and a bit sheets worth. Yeah, we get 18 rips per sheet, cutting them at 64 mil and allowing for a three mil saw blade. That will give us 18 per sheet. And we've got about 65 here. Yeah, it's about 65. Yeah, so Sean is just simply just gonna tap those down now. Okay, let's have a look. So we're just trying to create it a nice flat base, really. You're not gonna get them all perfect. When you're cutting these strips up on the table saw, there is gonna be slight variation, especially if you're cutting them up on your own or you haven't got a big professional table saw, you are gonna get a little bit of variation. This is why we're gonna be using PAT 120, 240 to just sand those down and just get them nice and level. All right, Sean's gonna crack on and do that. And after that, I'll show you the next procedure. So there we go, we've got the whole pack flat, ready to go. And we never used to do this fence before. Sean came up with the idea today of just putting that fence on to keep it square. And he's saying that they're coming up much flatter. And honestly, they are really flat for 65 pieces of rough um, MDF. Let's see if we can have a look down here. Pretty flat. Next stage is, Sean, what's the next stage? Summary, please. Next stage, sanding with ATP. Sanding with ATP. And what instruments will you use for this experiment? The portable The portable? Do you want to use this machine here? <laughs> what's it called? The orbital or the portable? <laughs> the orbital. <laughs> <laughs> um, look at Sean, he's always getting teas. <laughs> How many teas do you reckon you've had since you've been here? A thousand. How many teas have you made me? Come on, this is on camera. How many teas? Quick, quick, quick. 20. That's not a very good ratio, Sean. Should have bought your kettle in. Um, anyway, so we just got the uh, Makita sander. This is the one that we use. It's a six inch. We used to have five inches. 
and it's plugged into ultimate workbench and so that is plugged into our hoover down there and when you turn the sander on it turns a hoover on so there we go we're good to go sean's just got the p80 on here now ready to go get a new one when you're doing a job like this and it'll just chomp through it and once you feel it's nice and smooth and all the saw cuts are out if you've got a stubborn one don't just keep going and going all you're going to do is create a dip you want to just go evenly with a sander okay don't work on one corner or one part more than the other evenly otherwise you'll end up with strips or a pack like this or an uneven corner and then when it comes to um, joining them together you're going to have gaps okay i've just come in and sean's about a third of the way through look at the difference oh that looks sexy man so we can get a close-up absolutely beautiful oh, that should be in the take gallery sean <laughs> that would be a work of art actually you could just glue those and cut them up and just have them as pictures what do you think yeah do you want one <laughs> Um, yeah, but you can see the difference here. Massive difference between the two. So the 80 just gets it completely flat. And yeah, Sean's had enough experience not to just work on any one space. He's got his own technique. Um, you're just going backwards and forwards like so. Yeah. And then you have random, then you go back the other way. Yeah, yeah, go back the other way afterwards. Yeah. So that is the 80. Sean's going to go into the do the 120 you won't notice much of a difference from the 120 it's just basically we're just polishing it up now technically we could just go ahead and just bang some primer on there yeah. um, it might fluff up a little bit and do you know what looking at it I'm thinking to myself well you probably could but you look at the MDF there is slight pitting not a lot okay but the, the primer would fill that I'm sure we put it on heavy and we do two coats but we're just going to do we're just going to go and do it properly um do the um 120 and the 240 and i'll show you after the 240 okay before we put the primer on yes yes <laughs> There we go, all the prep done now, so that's the 240, and it's come out really, really smooth. Yeah, the mistake would be to use these as they are and not to prime them, because when you are spraying, the spray doesn't like to stick to sort of like end grain at all. Um, so you'll be coating and coating and coating forever. So just for the sake of two minutes worth of work, this is the quickest part, is we're just going to get some primer on there. Okay, a little bit of a dust down. Just to make sure we're not just painting any bits of dust in there. Even though we're going to be sanding it again after, once it's been primed. Here we go, that's dusted. Let's go ahead and apply the primer. So the primer that we're using, it can be any primer to be honest. Um, we're just using this. This goes a long way. It's probably about two years old, this tub. It's got a gloss roller. Just cover it in a glove. And that's been going for months and months. What, six months? Yeah. <laughs> that one roller head. <laughs> um, it's only for this job of rollering uh, primer on edges. It doesn't have to do anything special. And we don't even get a tray half the time. Well, I say we. I always say the we, don't I? When I Sean generally does it. <laughs> All right, go on, Sean. Show, show them how you do this part. Remember, there will be a comprehensive guide on sanding MDF edges um, if you have a look up, or I'm not too sure if I've already done that. Um, yeah, but have a look at sanding edges or, or type in MDF edges on my YouTube video search. Be plenty there for you to look at. Yeah, do you know what? I think this roller has had it today. <laughs> anyway, it's doing the job for now, but yeah i think it's about time we get a, another roll ahead anyway that's that's what we're going to do we're going to do one coat let it dry in this sun outside by the time he's finished the pack it's probably going to be ready to um sand and you're just going to what are you going to do to sand back 240. 240 on the orbital yeah. 240 on the orbital we used to do it by hand but we just decided that with the orbital it's so much better and it gives you a better finish as long as you don't go mad it's just a quick two second blitz on it just to get rid of those high point points and it will polish it up like glass it will feel so smooth and when it comes to top coating um, in the spray room when it comes to spraying your doors just one coat would cover that completely 
I mean, we wouldn't. We would do three coats, but we know that even one coat is good enough to cover those edges with the top coat um, rather than five on the doors that I've just done because, um, yeah, like I said, those edges weren't primed for me. So, yeah, Sean's going to crack on, do that, and um, we'll come back in a minute. So this is the both coats of paint done. As you can see, it's absolutely solid. Just looks like one solid wall of white. Can't see any joints. And this is how you want it to be, okay? Completely flat and solid white. Next stage is just get the 240 on the sander and just give it a quick going over, probably 30 seconds on the whole pack, no more. Then we can break the pack apart. <laughs> To smooth this, you'll probably get it unless you go down to 320, but there's no need. It's just like one solid slab now. Absolutely spot on. All right, so next we're going to break them apart now, take the arises off and give them a sand on the edges, and that would be the job done. So you're probably asking, how do they split apart? Considering they've been sanded and painted, how's the paint going to split apart? Well, they split apart nicely. Let's find out. Oh, that's so satisfying. Let's have a look at one. Look how crisp that is. Crisp. No breakout or anything. They just literally just split apart really nicely. So Sean's just going to split them all apart and then we'll be ready. Sean always gets the fun jobs. <laughs> Isn't she lovely? So when we do make the shake star doors and we add them, obviously we don't want this horrible sh um, sharp edge. As much as it looks quite nice now, nice and sharp, um, we still need to take the arises off. So we take the arises off on the inside top only. We don't take an aris off where it touches the panel. Okay, because otherwise the spray will leave a black line. What we generally do on the inside edge where it touches the panel is we just give it one swipe with P240 just to take any um, jagged edges that the paint left when we split them apart. That way when we're spraying with the spray, it doesn't take 100 coats to get that gap closed, okay? Or shouldn't actually leave a gap. So we're going to take this Aris off only all the way through. And when it comes to the rails, we do, again, the top front corner and we do a short edge here as well so we get that detail Sean's nearly through the pack all we need to really show you now is how to take the arises off so what we've oh look Sean's already got that out we've got this katsu um, we've got a video about this I'll leave a link in the description um, for this and look above right now should be a video on this this has been going for how long Sean give me a date it's good for dates. Two and a bit years? Yeah, two years. Two years, I think more than two. And it gets used probably more than any tool that we have in the workshop. Yeah? It yeah. does, doesn't it? It yeah. does miles of it. With these 1.6 millimeter radius cutters, again, that will be in the description. We just whiz around with one of these. So this Katsu is dirt cheap, it's about 80 quid, and it fits a Makita battery. because. So there we go, there's a strip ready. Sean's just gonna crack on and finish those. And that's exactly how you prepare all the strips to make your shake style doors. Don't miss this out. It only takes a few hours to do so and then you've got a whole load of stock that's gonna last you months and months. So, thumbs up, Sean. Hey, see you later. Thanks everyone, take it easy. See you next Sunday. Ciao for now. <laughs>